hello. Uh, today I'm going to be teaching you a bit about recursive compositing, which is a te technique I use to uh, make some complex visuals out of simple uh, objects. Some people in the server were asking me to do, uh, were asking me how I did some of the shots in my map part, so uh, this is how I did specifically the hand one. Uh, but I'm going to show you a different example just to show you how kind of versatile this technique is. So. Uh, this is a software called Touch Designer. It's pretty cool. It's free. Uh, you can do some crazy stuff with it. I love using it. It's pretty easy to learn. You'll, you'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, to import an uh, image that you want to use in your project, you'll uh, get this little thing. It's called a uh, top. And you'll press tab, and it'll, it'll create this little menu and you'll grab it and it's called uh, movie file in and then you'll go up to this little window up here to select uh, which file you want to use so I created one specifically for this tutorial it's this little uh, cattail image and I'm just going to really quickly go to nearest pixel so it doesn't look very blurry um, and then we're going to do a quick chroma key to get that red background out of there uh, usually you'll want to have an image with a really strongly discolored background, there we go, um, then maybe there's a few pixels in there that are, there we go, there we go, okay, uh, same thing if you want it to look pixel perfect, select these nearest pixels, they're usually in the, the common tab, uh, instead of interpolate, so now I'm going to add a null just in case we want to add some effects earlier in the effect chain. Uh, and then this is the key part, this is the key component of everything. This is a, a feedback loop, a very basic one. So, you want to have your uh, image that is the final way you want it before it's replicated infinite amount of times. Uh, put that into a feedback, and then into a composite, and then also put that feedback into the composite. And now, we will add our uh, transformation. So basically, Put in a transform right here and maybe a level just to control it. Maybe we can add some depth or something <clears throat> later on. And then drag that last panel over to this one and change the. Uh, or hold on, let's uh, actually translate this a little bit. So we'll add some more variations to the right of it and change this to over um, not sure why that isn't working oh it's not playing my apologies anyway here we go so now you can see that we get all these recreations uh, of the same image almost instantly and the way this works basically is uh, the image goes into here right and then it goes to the transform uh, and that goes through here. It goes to the feedback. So then there are two here. Let me see if I can actually get a frame by frame of this. Uh, so it goes to the transform. It comes back to here, and then it's composited with the original. It's put under. So now there are two, and then both of these get put through the same compositing process, uh, and it moves the whole thing over. So now these two have been moved over, but now there's three of them, four, so on. It gets moved over the same amount each time. Uh, we could also do some scaling stuff. Maybe that'll create a, an effect that looks sort of like it's getting shorter in the distance. Here we go. So yeah, so <laughs> it branches off like that. Maybe some uh, some squish would make it. There we go. There we go. Um, look at that. That's already pretty cool. Uh, here, let me... Here, this is why I added that null so I could add in effects earlier in the chain without having to reconnect all these things. So I'm just going to move it a little bit uh, to the left, so we have more of a dramatic effect. Uh, and we could even... Hmm. No, I think that's alright. This is a pretty simple demonstration. Uh, going to do some nearest pixels so it doesn't get fuzzy. Although you could keep that and it sort of create a natural uh, uh, blurring effect, which, you know, 
whatever. Lots of stuff you can do. Lots of crazy things are available to you. So yeah, we have this kind of cool thing. But now what's even cooler is we can add motion to this. Um, so I'm grabbing, I'm pretty sure this is showing up in the recording. If you go into the chop tab, this is to do this. Uh, all these things have to do with like numbers and values and mathematics. Uh, you can grab this thing called the LFO, which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator, and it basically is just a waveform uh, that oscillates in a, within a range that you set it, and you can reference that value in other things. So if we go here, here I'll set the amplitude down to 0.1. Amplitude is the basically how high and low it goes offset you can create it so that it stays in the positive which I might do that 0.2 so it goes between 0.2 and 0.1 now and frequency is just how fast it oscillates um, so if I do this it'll create sort of a, a rippling effect I believe yeah uh, let me see can I offset that by maybe 0.1 there we go Maybe make that 0 0.05, just so it's less extreme. 0 0.05, no. Not 0 0.05, 0 0.05, here we go. Okay, and then another thing I really like to do, if you go up to image filters over here, uh, there's a thing called RGBA delay, and that basically delays the different color values, and you sort of get this chromatic abrasion effect, but I don't really like that too much so usually I just use it to delay the entire image by setting all of them to the same thing so now uh, here let me exacerbate that we delay it even more there we go we sort of get a, a snake pattern a winding pattern instead of an almost instantaneous one so if I Actually, if we let this go into the negative, um, we'll get a, there we go, interesting, very interesting, look at that, that's cool, and this is also really uh, not hardware intensive, like it's super easy on your computer, uh, mostly because it's not simulating all of these objects it's simulating like one frame and then recompositing it so it doesn't need to simulate like an infinite series of objects it just needs to reference like two uh, being this one and the composite uh, feedback loop so that's always super helpful when uh, usually when you don't have a lot of processing power like I can run this on a I have an old tough book which is basically like a police computer and it doesn't have a very good uh, processor oh, it has like 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM uh, and it runs like a dream on that um, but yeah I, I may make more tutorials in the future about this uh, if you want me to show other examples about this leave a comment or if you want to know about other techniques that I use uh, leave, a, leave a comment alright uh, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed and got useful information out of this. I'll leave a download link to Touch Designer in the description. Uh, and yeah.